Here at Southampton General Hospital, there is ongoing research into how nutrients are passed from mother to baby. But how does this process work? Dr. Rohan Lewis and his team, as part of the Placental Research Group, are investigating this using various techniques. Well, here's a model of the placenta. And maternal blood comes in one side of the placenta, and the fetal villi come from the other side. The fetal villi are bathed in the maternal blood, they float around like seaweed in the ocean, and suck the nutrients out, which are then transported back to the fetus. The placenta, like in other cells, the cell is covered in a lipid membrane. The nutrients can't get through the lipid membrane by themselves. They need a certain sort of door. And in cells, this door is made out of protein. So there'll be a door of a certain shape that allows a certain nutrient through. So glucose will go through one door, amino acids will go through another set of doors. And for each nutrient, there can be different sorts of door. So you can get a door which allows you to go in but not come out again. It can be a door like a revolving door where one thing comes in, another thing goes out. And there's a door which is sort of open all the time where things can go in and go out. These doors, also known as transporters, allow nutrients to cross the membrane barrier. The nutrients, such as amino acids, are moved from the maternal to the fetal blood. In order to do this, the nutrients must first enter the placental membrane. Some types of transporters, like the accumulative transporter, take up specific amino acids, allowing them to sit inside the placental membrane. This specificity is seen when other amino acids attempt to pass the membrane via these transporters. The transferred nutrients inside the membrane can then be exchanged for other amino acids via an exchanger protein. More nutrients can enter the membrane via this system. Once inside the membrane, these nutrients need to be transferred into the fetal blood where the baby can utilise them for growth. For this process, there are facilitated transporters that Dr Lewis describes as open doors, which allow amino acids to cross the membrane. Amino acids in the fetal blood are exchanged for those in the placental membrane using another exchanger protein found on the fetal side of the membrane. This system allows a range of amino acids to cross the placental membrane barrier to fulfil the baby's nutritional demands. But how was this found out? Alongside lab research, Dr Lewis and his team use computer models to further understand how this system works. It's very hard in your head to be able to work out what a nutrient's going to do when it's got all possible doors to go through. So the modelling allows us to see what's most likely to happen with all the different types of door and how that affects how the fetus grows. Computer modelling has helped gain a better understanding of how the baby gets fed in the womb. As the placenta is the only source of nutrition for the baby, if this system doesn't work properly, the baby will be born too small, making them more susceptible to diseases in adult life that could affect anyone, such as diabetes and cardiovascular disorders. Computer models could potentially help provide novel ways to reduce the chance of developing these diseases.